So Hare Krishna, dear devotees, I'd like to seek the blessings of Radha Mother, Radha Shamsam, the Krishna Balaram, Gaunitai, Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj and the assembled devotees so that we can continue with looking at these amazing personalities who are uh, administrators of this material world. So we've uh, looked at um, uh, Brahma, Shiva, Durgamata, Ganesh, Indra, Surya, Chandra, Agni, Yamraj. Yesterday we looked at Yamraj and today we want to look at Saraswati Devi. So um, now this is very interesting. In the spiritual world, there are three ma major potencies of the Lord. There's the Samvit, which helps the residents of the spiritual world recognize their relationship with uh, Krishna. Um, there is Sandini, which ensures uh, there's the var variegatedness in the spiritual world, there's a lot of variety. And then there's the Hladini Shakti. This uh, is perhaps of the three, the most potent. The, it functions as the internal potency of the Lord. And it provides ultimate pleasure to Krishna. That's why it's so potent. And Srimati Radharani is a personification of this Ladini potency. She is the source of all pleasures for the Lord. And Yoga Maya is also an expansion of this spiritual potency. So we went through that when we we're looking at Durga Mata. Yoga Maya is the personal potency of Lord Krishna's energy. And Yoga Maya manifests as Divya Saraswati. This is, she's still very, very spiritual. Very, she's not connection with this material world. And she is the goddess of spiritual knowledge and the eternal consort of Lord Narayan. So this is Ladini Shakti, the potency is personified by Radharani, whose expansion is Yoga Maya manifested as Divya Saraswati in the spiritual world, not the Saraswati in this material world. Lord Brahma, after manifesting on the lotus flower which emanates from Vishnu, meditates on the Lord for a long time after hearing the word tapa, meaning uh, austerity. So he, he puts that into practice. The Saraswati, or Saraswati, who is a consort of Lord Narayan, gave him the Gopal Mantra. And he meditated on Golo, eventually having Darshan of the Lord. So this is that Saraswati. The Saraswati that is in the spiritual world. The Saraswati of our world is an expansion of this Divya Saraswati. And she, they're both distinct personalities. The Saraswati of our world is the wife of Lord Brahma. And she reveals mundane knowledge to the materialists. Yeah. And to the devotees, this Saraswati in this material world will give them Divya Gyan, will give them transcendental knowledge. She's a divine spiritual goddess, an expansion of Radharani, who is Krishna's internal energy. So we can have a quick look at uh, how that works within the spiritual context in, in diametrical form. So we've seen this before. The, uh, the, the spiritual and material worlds. We have Devi Dham here, then uh, Mahesh Dham, then we have the effulgence of the Supreme Lord, we have Haridham, Vaikuntha, Ayodhya, and then finally Golok, Vrindavan. Now, if we look at this section here, which is Vaikuntha, this is Vaikuntha, and a little bit more detail of Vaikuntha, we have Mother Saraswati there. So this is, uh, oops, this is Lakshmi Narayan, and these are the like uh, expansions. This is the uh, first Chaturview, 
or maybe the second chaturvi. This is the second chaturvi. And Saraswati is an expansion. So she's like Lakshmi. And her um, uh, eternal consort is Padumna. There you go. Saraswati and Padumna. This is the Saraswati in the spiritual world, not in our world, not the wife of Brahma. This is the wife or the consort of Narayan or Padumna. So this is uh, Brahma. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's anybody, yeah. So this Saraswati who is with uh, Narayan. Yes. That Saraswati and this Saraswati. This is this Saraswati is an expansion of that Saraswati. Yeah, that's it. And then there's third Saraswati is one who is in the material world and wife of Brahma. Yes. Correct. Okay. Correct. So when we pray to Saraswati at the time of the Diwali and the Diwali cards, that is the which Saraswati is that? That's the material world, Lord Lord Brahma's world. Brahma's wife. Yeah. yeah. And, and in the temple, when they said Lakshmi Narayan temple, then it is the Saraswati and Lord Narayan. It's probably it depends. It depends on the understanding. It depends on the understanding of the devotee as well. So, for example, the materialist will be worshipping Saraswati to get mundane knowledge. But the devotees will be worshipping Saraswati in this, of the spiritual world. So even during the time, as you said, of Diwali, actually the devotees will be worshipping Saraswati, the consort of Lord Vishnu. Because they want Divya Gyan, and she will only give Divya Gyan. The, spirit, the material world Saraswati will give mundane knowledge to those who want mundane knowledge, but she'll, she'll give spiritual knowledge to those who want spiritual knowledge. But the devotees will, will um, they will always uh, approach the, the consort of the um, Supreme Lord, Saraswati. Divya Saraswati. Yeah. 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 It so can in be the confusing, isn't it? It can get confusing. Very confusing. Very confusing. You know which Saraswati they're talking about. <laughs> but in the temple, um, for example, our Guru Maharaj, he has uh, installed the deity of Saraswati in Kalkidham. And I did ask him, uh, actually, is this this Saraswati of the material world or the Saraswati of the spiritual world. And he said, this depends on, as far as he's concerned, this is the Saraswati of the spiritual world. Mm. But it depends on the worshiper. You can worship her as Saraswati of the material world if you want to. But the devotees will worship her as the consort of Narayan. Okay. And, and uh, beg her for spiritual gyan. Like Brahma, Brahma, when he meditated, she came and gave him the Gayatri Mantra. <laughs> so. And this Gayatri Mantra, and this another man mantra you just mentioned is Gopal Mantra. That's, that's the mantra that she gave him. Uh, that's the mantra she gave him, Gopal Mantra. That's the one he meditated on. Yeah, the Divya Saraswati. Yeah, that's correct. Gopal Mantra, okay. Gopal Mantra, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very good. So this is Brahma Samhita, text number 24. And uh, this is uh, what uh, Karuna has been taking us through on Sundays. Uvacha puratas tasmai tasya divya saraswati. So this is uh, giving that uh, confirmation of this divya saraswati. Kama krishnaya govinda he gopi chan gopiyana Kopi jana ittiyapi vallabhya priya vanne mantram te dasyati priyam. Then the goddess of learning, Saraswati, the divine concept of the Supreme Lord, is not saying my consort, <laughs> said thus to Brahma, who saw nothing but gloom in all directions. O oh Brahma, this mantra. So this is the Go, Gopal Mantra. Klim Krishnaya Govindai Gopi Janavalabhai Swaha will assuredly fulfill your heart's desire. 
So this is this is the initiation given <laughs> by Mother Saraswati, Divya Saraswati to Brahma. So it's really powerful, very very powerful. So now we're going to come to the Saraswati of this world. Saraswati is the goddess of knowledge, music, art, speech, wisdom, and learning, and is closely connected with all aspects of Vedic culture. She is one of the three Devi, along with uh, goddess Lakshmi and Parvati. She represents Satagun and Gyan Shakti. Saraswati has three main forms. It's Vacha, speech, personified, as the goddess of learning and the arts, as the legendary river now dried up. After creating the world, Lord Brahma looked at what he has made. He realized that the world was ununiform, uninformed, uninformed, so ignorant, and utterly lacking knowledge. Therefore, Brahma created an embodiment of knowledge to help him with his monumental task of creating intelligence. Hence, from his mouth originated the goddess of wisdom and knowledge, goddess Saraswati. So she is an act, actually an expansion of the Divya Saraswati in the spiritual world. Later, she became the bride of Brahma. The Vedas also counted amongst Saraswati's children. Vedas are counted as her children. She's therefore called Ved Mata, the mother of the Vedas, or the mother of knowledge. So this is Brahma and uh, Mother Saraswati. The goddess Saraswati is depicted as a beautiful woman dressed in pure white with a blue border, a deep blue border often seated on a white lotus, which symbolizes light, knowledge, and truth. She not only embodies knowledge, but also the experience of the highest reality. Saraswati's color is white, representing purity, as she rules the intellect, the intellectual and creative realms. Worldly possessions do not interest her. She does not adorn herself with an abundance of gems and jewelry, like other goddesses nor is she generally worshipped in her deity form at home. So generally, uh, at home, uh, we don't have a, a deity of Saraswati. But in the temple, there will be, or there might be. She's generally shown to have four arms, representing man, as mind and senses, buddhi, intelligence, reasoning, jit, imagination, creativity, and ahankar, self consciousness, ego. The four hands hold items with symbolic meanings. There's the pushta, the book or scripture. The book she holds symbolizes the Vedas, representing the universal, divine, eternal, and true knowledge, as well as all forms of learning. She also holds a mala, which is the rosary, beads, garland. Uh, mala of crystals, representing the power of meditation, inner reflection, and spirituality. So this is uh, quite a nice picture of Saraswati Ma in a white lotus, wearing white with the blue borders. Another picture, she's got the swan carrier. So the third thing she holds, water pot, a pot of water representing the purifying power of to separate right from wrong the clean from the unclean, the essence from the inessential. The pot of water can be symbolism for symbolism for soma, the drink that liberates and leads to knowledge. And she has a musical instrument, like here she had the veena. This represents all creative arts and sciences and her holding it symbolizes, expresses, expressing knowledge that creates harmony. Saraswati is also associated with anurag, the love for and rhythm of music, which represents all emotions and feelings expressed in speech or music. And then the hamsa, the swan, is often shown near her feet. This hamsa is a sacred bird, which if offered a mixture of milk and water is said to be able to drink the milk alone. 
So she can separate the nectar um, out and enjoy the nectar. That's why the song is so uh, uh, auspicious bird. It does symbolizes the inability, the ability to discriminate between good and evil. Essence from the outward show and um, the eternal form from the evans, evancient. The swan is also symbolism for spiritual perfection, transcendence, and moksha. Generally, the swan, you know, we say swan like devotees, you know, graceful. Swans are very graceful, very dignified, They're very much in the mood of uh, subtle one. Sometimes a chitrame kala, also called mayu or um, peacock, is shown beside the goddess. The peacock symbolizes colorful splendor, the celebration of dance and viraro of snakes the chemical ability to transmute the serpent poison of self into the um, radiant uh, polymer of enlightenment. So this is, the peacock is very powerful because it destroys the snake of, uh, uh, you know, um, the poison, I suppose, and uh, allows one to uh, taste the nectar. So, the peacock has that ability, destroys the snake and dives into the nectar. Saraswati is celebrated as a feminine deity with healing and purifying powers of abundant flowing water in book 10 of the Rig Veda. So this is the river. The word Saraswati appears both as a reference to a river and as a significant deity in the Rig Veda. She also goes by many names, Shaturu, uh, goddess of material existence, Bharati, eloquence, Brahmani, power of Brahma, Brahm, Brahmi, being the wife of Brahma, Varneshwari, goddess of letters, Kavi Jivya Gravasini, one who dwells on the tongue of poets, Veena Pani, holding Veena in hand, Varneshwari, goddess of letters, oh, said that already. Vidyadatri, goddess who provides knowledge. Veena Vadini, goddess who plays Veena, the instru musical instrument held by goddess Saraswati. Pushtak, Pushtak Dharini, uh, goddess who carries a book. Hamsa Vahini, goddess who sits on swan. Vagdevi, goddess of speech. The honor offered to the spiritual master is transferred to Vyasdev because Vyasdev is the original guru. Therefore, it is stated, Devim Sadasvatim Vyasam. So, this is what we chant every day, whenever we read the Bhagavatam. Narayanam Namaskate Naram Cheva Narotam Devim Sadasvatim Vyasam. To Jemudiri. Sadasvati Devi, knowledge or goddess of education. Devim Sadasvatim Vyasam To Jemudiri. After offering obeisances to Narayan, then we ask there, and then Saraswati Devi, very important person, whom we have to honor. There are two main festivals celebrated in her honor. Vasant Panchami. This is a spring season festival celebrated throughout Bharat. Worshipping Mother Saraswati, the goddess of education, creativity, and music is also is of great significance. It is also quoted that on the day of Vasant Panchami, Brahma created the goddess Saraswati. That's why worshipping Mother Saraswati on this particular day is unique. So often students uh, will be worshipping her on this day. I think we'll be we talk about that a little bit later. As per Vedic education, uh, literature, Lord Krishna blessed this goddess Saraswati that on Vasant Panchami, she should be worshipped everywhere. People offer their obeisances and uh, goddess, uh, worship goddess uh, Saraswati on every Vasant Panchami. On this day, goddess Saraswati is worshipped before day, midday. Devotees adorn the deity with white clothes and flowers. The white color is believed to be her, the favorite color of goddess Saraswati. Usually, the sweets made of milk and white sesame seeds are offered to goddess Saraswati and distributed as prashad amongst friends and family members. In North Bharat, yellow flowers are offered to Goddess Saraswati on the 
auspicious day of Vasant Panchmi due to the abundance of uh, blossoming um, mustard flowers and marigold at this time of year. The practice of introducing children to the world of education and learning on the day of Vasant Panchmi is important on Vasant Panchmi. Most schools and colleges hold a Saraswati Puja. So that's an important festival to honor the goddess of learning. And then we have the Narat Navratri Saraswati Puja. This is performed during the Shrad Navratri festival, which is more common in South India. The celebration starts with uh, Puja Vyapu, placing for worship. It consists of placing the books for Puja on the Astami on the altar. It may be in one's own house uh, or in a local nursery run by traditional teachers or in the local temple. The books will be taken out for reading after worship only on the morning of the third day, which is Vijay Dasmi. It is um, called Puja Idupu, taken from, taking from Puja. Children are happy since they are not expected to study on these days. <laughs> on the Vijay Dasmi day, Kerala and Tamil Nadu celebrate the Ishuti Niruta, or initiation of writing for the little children before they are admitted to nursery schools. This is called uh, Vidya Rambam. The child is made to write for the first time on the rice bread in a plate with the index finger, guided by a, an elder of the family or by a teacher. During the Navratri festivals, festivities on the seventh day, which coincides with Mula Nakshatra, which is considered to be Devi's birth style star, the goddess in various temples are decorated and worshipped in the form of Maha Saraswati in honor of the goddess of learning, wisdom, arts, and learning, sorry, knowledge. Students visit these temples in large numbers and receive books, pencils, pens, and other learning equipment as Devi Pashar. Akshara Bihas, the celebration, the ceremony of initiating a child into the process of learning is held on a large scale across these temples. In Rigved, Mother Saraswati has been glorified. Pra, uh, prano Devi Saraswati, Vya Vaj, Hebhir, Vajina, Vati, Dinam, Avitri, Avatu, Supreme Consciousness in the form of Goddess Saraswati, protect our intelligence, mind, and psychology. Whatever character and intellect we got are because of Mother Saraswati, who has unique opulence in terms of prosperity and form. So Supreme Consciousness means the Supreme Personality of Goddess, Sri Krishna, the original cause of all causes. The Supreme Personality of Goddess has given different services to his devotees to govern the material world. For example, Brahma is responsible for the creation, Lochiva for annihilation, Goddess Lakshmi for wealth, Goddess Durga for protecting this material world, which is compared to um, a prison. Protecting actually this, the spiritual world from um, those who are not qualified to go there. Similarly, Goddess Saraswati is given a department of knowledge creativity in music, which she governs very skillfully. Goddess Saraswati bestows these qualities upon those who worship her and please her with their rituals. However, Goddess Saraswati never forgets that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is her master and all the devatas and devis are being engaged in his service as per these examples. So, so now there's a few examples that we go through about uh, Mother Saraswati. Kumkaran, as per Ramayan, when Kumkaran, the brother of Rama, Ravan, performed severe austerities to please Brahma, all the devatas and devis became afraid of him. Thus they approached God the Saraswati and requested her to sit on the tongue of Kumkaran when he asked for benediction from Brahma. Mm -hmm. Goddess Saraswati assured the demigods and agreed to sit on the tongue of Kumkaran. Kumkaran wanted Indrasan, so he wanted the kingdom of Indra as a benediction. 
But under the influence of Goddess Saraswati, he ended up asking for Nindrasam, <laughs> oversleeping Nind. In that way, Goddess Saraswati assisted devatas for, for, to protect the Lord's creation. So very interesting. She tricked him. <laughs> Ramanujicharya. One more illustration can be seen from Sri Pad Ramanujicharya's life. Ramanujacharya's spiritual master instructed him to write a Vaishnav style commentary on Ved Vyas Vedanta Sutra. He went to Kashmir based uh, Sharda Pit to get the original text. When residents of Sharda Pit denied him the original text, Goddess Saraswati personally came and provided him with the original text. When uh, Shriman um, Shripad Ramanuja Charya finished the commentary. Mother Saraswati became very pleased. She presented to Ramanuja Charya her personal deity of Haya Griva, a plenary expansion of Lord Sri Hari, and awarded, awarded him the title scholar. <laughs> Keshava Kashmiri, this is a, a wonderful pastime. He was a great scholar. He was a great devotee of Mother Saraswati. And he would go everywhere to challenge people because he was so clever. He would challenge the scholars. So one day he came to Navadvip, which was one of the center places of scholars. And he came to debate based on scripture. He had visited all the learning centers of India and was unconquered in all of them. So when he came to Navadvip, everybody disappeared. <laughs> all the pundits, all the scholars, because they knew his reputation. Only Nimai was left. So once Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who was popularly known as Nimai Pandit at that time, was on the banks of the river Ganga. There, Keshav, Keshav Kashmiri challenged him. And he created a hundred verses to praise the river Ganga within a few minutes. And he proudly spoke all of those verses to Nimai. So this is his. Uh, uh, this was his uh, challenge to Nimai, because that's what he used to do. He used to go and challenge everybody that I can do this, I can do that better than you can. He would defeat everybody. Digvijay was called. Anyway, Nimai, being Krishna himself, not only memorized all the hundred verses instantly but he also quoted various grammatical errors in the 64th verse. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he quoted back to, well, it was very gentle. Nimai said to Keshav uh, uh, Bharti, I uh, know, sorry, uh, Keshav Kashmiri, yes, you have really beautifully done this uh, elegance, elegant uh, poetry of Mother Ganga. And the 64th verse really caught my attention. And he quoted it back to Keshav Kashmir. He was shocked. How can this boy, Nimai, remember this, memorize this verse? Within a second, he memorized it. And Nimai gave him the good points. And then he said, well, actually, there are some uh, issues I have. There's some grammatical errors in the 64th. And Keshav Kashmiri was stunned. He said, what? What do you mean? So then. Uh, Nimai Pandit um, uh, gave those uh, grammatical errors. And that is in the Chaitanya Charitamrit. It's given in some detail. Keshava Kashmiri was amazed. He was stunned. He was puzzled at how a small boy of Sanskrit grammar school was finding errors in his composition. So he went away disheartened. He was devastated. He couldn't sleep. He kept praying to Mother God, Sadasarthi, what happened? What happened? How can I be humiliated by a little boy? Goddess Saraswati came in his dreams. As he was a great devotee of Mother Saraswati, so Mother Saraswati cared for Keshav Kashmiri. She ordered Keshav Kashmiri to take shelter at the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, don't be disheartened. You have been defeated by the Supreme Lord himself, who is my deity, who is my worshipable deity. 
She also informed him that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is no other than Lord Sri Krishna. In this way, Keshav Kashmiri, he then woke up and he realized and he went running to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he uh, took shelter and became a great devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is the blessing of Mother Saraswati. She's a great devotee. All the above incidents show how Mother Saraswati is a unique devotee of Lord Sri Krishna. She's using her post and designation to assist devotees of the Lord. So, um, there's a very nice pastime of, of uh, Mother Saraswati cursing Brahma. There's a, not quite sure whether it's Mother Saraswati or Savitri, but anyway, we'll go through this pastime. One Saraswati arrived late at the yagya that was being performed by Brahma. The yagya had a ritual that it could not be performed without, without the, the wife being present, right? The final bits couldn't be done without the wife being there. And she came very late. And in the meantime, <laughs> uh, Brahma was given a wife because he couldn't finish the yakya without the wife. So he married Gayatri to complete the ritual. When Saraswati found out what happened, she was very angry and she cursed Brahma. You have filled the world with longing and bowed the seed of unhappiness. May there hardly be any temple or any festival of yours. So due to this curse, there are only two popular temples of Lord Brahma, one in Pushkar, Rajasthan, and the other in Tamil Nadu. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk a lot more about that pastime when we're looking at the other devis, especially Sav Savitri. So uh, that's the end of uh, uh, what I wanted to present. And I wanted to ask uh, Surinder 